Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel, Little Badger Listens. Uh, you know, I, I have to be honest with you, this channel has gotten neglected, as have all my channels. I've got a lot going on, and this one I'm still figuring out what it's supposed to be, so I don't know. I don't know, I'm still learning. Uh, you can tell me what you like, what you don't like, you can tell me what you think, and uh, yeah. We'll see. But anyway, uh, we're going to do my top five songs for a Sunday evening. Because Sunday evenings have a particular feel. Especially when you're a teacher, you know. You're always, uh, you know, too little time, too much work. A little stress out, but it's still somehow the weekend. It's a, it's a unique feel to a Sunday evening. So, uh, let me let me tell you. Uh, Sunday evenings have always been full of gnawing existential dread for me personally. Uh, my mind shuffles through a pack of unanswered questions. Why do I stay at my job? What would happen if I just didn't show up tomorrow? Why do I feel so lonely even though I'm surrounded by people? Did I really enjoy my weekend enough to spend the rest of next week just looking forward to another weekend which, like as not, will be just like this one? Sunday evenings are a subtle kind of depression. Uh, they're for sitting in increasingly lukewarm bathwater with unrinsed shampoo in your hair as you ponder the imponderable. It's, it's a blessed little depression is what it is. That's Sunday evening. Tell me if I'm the only one who feels that way, but I, I think it impossible that I do. Anyway, uh, we're going to go through some honorable mentions, and then we're going to get to my top five. Honorable mention, this one, it's pure nostalgia. L look, this is a terrible album. It is not a good sample of Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. It's just not. Look, this is 1980s hit. Herb Albert was trying to hold on, keep things going, and uh, so he added a lot of synthesizers. There's a lot of, you know, 808 beats and whatnot in this thing, and it just, it doesn't quite work. But I listened to this all the time when I was a kid, and it has a way of dredging up those old feelings uh, that, you know, I was raised very religious and raised to just sort of, you know, uh, always be thinking about the end times for real. And somehow in my brain, this song and the end times are just inextricably linked to each other. You know, uh, is Jesus coming back tomorrow? Yeah, probably. And this is a song about it is how it feels to me in my brain and I, I i honorable mentioned it just because i know i'm gonna be the only one who feels that way about this song or has ever heard it uh don't you know don't go out of your way trying to find this it's you know unless you have nostalgia for it it's probably not gonna hit your ear in a pleasant way uh number two this one you should definitely look up this is from Kenna's second album. Uh, Kenna is an electronic ensemble. I, I think it's one dude. Um, and the first album was amazing. New Sacred Cow. And uh, I forget. They, he was signed to a hip hop label of some sort. And it was somebody big. It was like a Dr. Dre or a somebody. Uh, or Eminem, or I don't know, uh, signed Kenna to their label, and uh, it's amazing. It's really, really good um, electronic music that's got a good beat to it, like, and it doesn't really sound like much else that's out there. It's really unique. Um, this song right here is uh, is a special kind of feel. It. It feels lonely and whatnot. The only, which is, you know, kind of what I'm going for on a lot of these songs. Uh, the only reason this is honorable mention is that ultimately there's hope at the end of this song. And, you know, if there's too much hope, 
then that's not Sunday night to me. You know, my Sunday nights are always hopeless. So that's the special feel that we go for. Uh, number three. Oh, I love this one. If I could cry, it would feel like this. Uh, Jens Lankman. This is when we just had so much good indie coming out of Scandinavia. I don't remember where Jens Lankman is from. I believe he is Scandinavian. Uh, but I will tell you this. Uh, this song, it at times feels like it's falling apart as you're listening to it. Um, but it's always just keeping it, just barely keeping it together. And then, you know, it'll erupt in these moments of grand majesty and beauty and then sort of fall back apart. It's, uh, it, it brings the feels in, in a special kind of way, you know. It's, uh, it's one of the more unique songs on the list. We've only got one more honorable mention, and that is Colors and Shapes by Mac Miller. Uh, you know, I will be forever grateful to the student who introduced me to this because not only is it Mac Miller, which I absolutely needed to know about at the time, um, but it's also Deep Cut Mac Miller. Uh, and this is just, you know, excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, it's not quite like a lot of things that uh, Mac Miller had on his studio albums. This is, you know, a special deal. Uh, so if you haven't heard Faces, um, th this entire mixtape, you know, you really should. Uh, but this song especially, this song especially gives a certain... Oh my God, it's Sunday evening and what am I doing with my life? Am I prepared for eternity? Because eternity's coming. A and it, Or is it? Or is it? Am I just going to lay down someday and it's just going to be eternal rest? I hope so. Or do I? No, I do. I definitely do. Oh man, I don't, I don't want to die and then wake up and still have more to do. I want to die and just take a forever nap. That's what sounds amazing to me. And, and this song has kind of that like being okay with it vibe. You know, like we all go back through Mac Miller's catalog and we try and parse out like, did he know that it wasn't going to end well for him? and that, it, that he wasn't going to be around as an old man, you know? Did he know that? I, I don't think he did, but uh, there's feels in some of this stuff that make you wonder. Anyway, now we're getting into it. Uh, Yesu Joy of Man's Desiring, a classical piece uh, recorded by Leo Kotke. This is his 6 and 12 string guitar album, the one with the armadillo, as most people call it. Uh, at least most people I know. <laughs> like, if you own a Leo Kotke album, it's probably this one. Um, he has other albums that are also good. This is just the best one. And it's, it's really an amazing album, top to bottom, some fantastic guitar work. But um, this one gives me the feels cause like I love guitar picking, just clean old school guitar picking. Reminds me of my father uh, who was picking folk guitar way back in the 60s. And it reminds me of my brother who sadly passed away a year and a half ago and my brother was an organist and he used to play Yesu Joy of Man's Desiring on the organ at every funeral for every member of our family and I wish I could remember whether or not we remembered to play it at his funeral uh, but I doubt any of us had the skill on the organ that he did uh, he was amazing at it. So this always reminds me of him. Originally composed by uh, Bach. I mean, there are multiple Bachs, but the original Bach, <laughs> the, the Johann Sebastian. 
anyway, no, uh, none of the other box, no PDQ box, for example. No, we're, we're going with the original. Uh, but yeah, you'll Im immediately recognize the melody um, of this one. But to hear it played on the guitar and played so very well, uh, just, you know, virtuosic playing that Leo Kotke always brings, uh, which is why he's so revered in the guitar community and which is why this, the Armadillo album, is so beloved. That's my number five. Number four, Jimmy Eat World, Local Boys, at least for me. They are originally from Arizona. And this is an album that a lot of people overlooked, but I immediately fell in love with, especially on the strengths of this song. Now, if you know Jimmy Eat World, you know that they uh, originated in the big, you know, early emo scene back when emo was like a good viable genre and not this whole mopey pop punk that it turned into anyway so jimmy world has been you know a band without a country for a while because a lot of the people they came up with aren't doing it anymore and so albums like this have just gotten, you know, sort of thrust aside and not a lot of people noticed that this even came out or cared about it. And I, when I heard Carry You, the, the, the song that I am highlighting here, uh, such a beautiful song. And of course, as Jimmy World, the chorus is larger than life. It's massive. It's huge. It's, uh, you know overpowering in many ways but the beautiful thing about this song is how like incredibly depressing it is like I don't know about you and this is like half of what this list is is about being depressed and being okay with it and just letting it wash over you that's how I feel on Sunday nights and uh yeah this song about like I can never be the one that you want. I can never change myself to be what you need me to be. And just resigning yourself to that hopelessness. Ugh, it's beautiful. It's beautifully depressing and I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, makes me wonder why I didn't include any of the, you know, more beautifully depressing stuff from the 1980s because man that was a you know if you're listening to the best 1980s music it is beautifully depressing talking about your psychedelic furs talking talking about your echoes and the bunny men you know just beautiful and depressing all at the same time amazing amazing stuff like i could make a whole list i should make a whole list of just you know 80s music that's uh depressingly beautiful and beautifully depressing anyway but yeah jimmy eat world if you miss this one please give it a listen it's excellent here we go number three make you feel that way by black Alicious. you know this one is perhaps the most direct attempt on the entire list to express what it feels like to feel that way only like it it's hinting at it it's it's getting there it's saying without saying because how could you really say what sunday evening feels like i mean i threw some words at it and i still think i failed uh, but Black Alicious, you know, and there's, you'll notice there's a common thing uh, with some of my favorite tracks on this list. Um, lonely Trumpet. Lonely Trumpet, that's, you know, if you got a Lonely Trumpet, that'll get you on this list. Because uh, something about a Lonely Trumpet, I just, I can't. Uh... <laughs> It just, you know, puts me back to when I was a kid and I just was sure that the apocalypse would happen before I got to enjoy my life, you know? Uh, it's a horrible kind of uh, depressing feeling, 
but you're supposed to be like, no, I'm living in the end times. This is great. Like, I get to meet Jesus. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't tell, I have since uh, left the faith that I was raised in. But like, yeah, the feelings were heavy. And as a kid, I took it very, very seriously and spent a lot of time just thinking about what it all is. And no song captures that specific feeling better than Make You Feel That Way by Black Alicious. Um, the entire Blazing Arrow album is amazing, and you should hear it if you never have. I assume if you're listening to this, you definitely have. Come on now. Of course you have. Uh, number two, this one, Hell, oh, Lonely Trumpet, here we go. I want to stay home by jellyfish um yeah this song it just you know like when i was a kid i used to build forts in my backyard and uh you know it was always a test when when harsh weather would come around you know i couldn't wait if it was raining or hailing or snowing or something i couldn't wait to go outside into my fort and see whether or not my fort was holding up and whether or not it was weatherproofed, you know? And uh, now I'm an adult and I own a home and uh, I often feel like my home is very similar to that childhood fort, you know? And I'd rather stay here and just avoid everyone else and everything else and just be home. You know, that's that's the Sunday evening feeling for real. And this song, like with the lonely trumpet and just the the beautiful jellyfish melodies and harmonies, like I just I love this band so much and this song is just purely indicative of that feeling. Now we get to our number one, and it can only be one thing. Every day is like Sunday. I mean, at first blush, it seems a little too on the nose, right? Like, oh, you're going to make a list of songs that give you a Sunday evening feel? Yeah, but this one, with the everything about it, because before I was talking about 1980s music that's you know, beautifully depressing and depressingly beautiful. Yeah, this kind of stuff is what I was talking about because this song, every day is like Sunday. Every day is silent and gray. Oh my God. If you want to feel that Sunday evening feeling any day of the week, this song right here, this song right here. And there is like, Anybody will tell you, anybody who's ever been broke up with will tell you, you want to wallow in your feelings? Smiths, Morrissey, there you go. That, that'll that get you there. Anyway, I love this song. And uh, when I'm having them special Sunday feelings, those like, oh man, what is it really all about? Is Sunday, I have to, you know, have I done well enough? Is it going to be okay tomorrow? Oh, that's the Sunday feeling right there. And even though it's a little on the nose that it literally says every day is like Sunday in this song, you cannot argue with the fact that no song feels more like a Sunday evening than this song. I will stand by that. That's how I feel. Anyway, if you got some favorite Sunday evening songs, feel free to tell me about them and uh yeah that'll do it for me uh i've enjoyed this one hope you did too and i will see you in the next one okay bye